Hi, it's Steve Harganon, and welcome to a day two keynote session for the 2017 Global Education Conference. We're sure glad that you've joined us. During this hour, we're going to have as our special guests Fabrice Fress and Jean-Luc Moreau. Uh, hello to both of you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks to our sponsors and supporters, especially to participate for their continued strong support of the conference and our activities. Cutter Foundation for the first time this year, helping with the world languages, Digital Promise Global, taking it global as our fiscal partner for the first time as well. Thanks to them and others for being a part of this event. Now, this is a chance for those of you who are in the live session to click on the star icon to the left of the map, and then click on the map in your current locate where you're currently located. So we have mostly North America at this point. I'm going to put a note in the chat here. I'm in North Carolina, where it's a nice cooler 54 degrees on a sunny day. Thank you for being here. Feel free to continue to put notes in the chat as to where you're located. And I'm going to turn the time over to Lucy to talk a little bit about our guests. Welcome, everyone. I am so excited to bring our speakers, um, our French-speaking speakers, to you today. Uh, Steve and I have been wondering how we can best reach out to European counterparts for a while. Um, and so we're really pleased with, with this introduction by Fabrice. Um, it's, there's certain parts that we've, we've been able to reach with our conference efforts in our community. And Western Europe is, is one area that we, we would like to have more members from. And last year, um, an organization called GENE, G-E-N-E, which is the Global Education Network of Europe, invited us to a conference in Paris about a little bit after last year's conference. And it was very interesting to us to uh, understand what global citizenship was from a European perspective. There were certainly more local issues that were driving some of the conversations there, such as um, immigration and migration. Um, and it was a really valuable opportunity. And we also had the opportunity to visit several schools. We, looked, we went to a French Catholic school in Paris. We went to Belgium and visited another school. And we went to a high school on the outskirts of Paris where an Erasmus Plus meeting was happening. And Steve found out about this because he started a, a community for, um, was it for the American Embassy in Paris, yeah, Steve? the Franco-American Exchange through the U.S. Embassy. Okay, a number of years ago, and he had reached out to people in there to see if they would host us on school visits when we came to Paris. And so this Erasmus Plus visit uh, was part of that. So we went to the outskirts of Paris to a high school where teachers from Europe, all over Europe had come for a training. And this was our first introduction to Erasmus Plus and the work that's going on there. So I'm particularly thrilled to have you two share with us more information, and I think it'll be interesting to everyone to see how other regions of the world are addressing education in general. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you two, and thank you again so much for sharing your knowledge and your expertise with us today. Thank you, Lucy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and Good evening, everybody. We would like to uh, thank Lucy and Steve for spearheading the eighth Global Education Conference and also for giving the opportunity for educators and educational organizations worldwide to exchange on the challenges of the future of our educational system. So thank you both for including us in your diverse program. Uh, 
We would like to thank uh, all of you for attending our session. We will first introduce our organization to you both in French and in English, and we will then proceed with the presentation of the Erasmus Plus program. We'll spend some time after our presentation to answer questions you may have, so I will let Jean-Luc speak first uh, by introducing Evadu in French. Bonsoir. Euh, notre association d'évaluateurs et d'experts a été créée euh, en 2012 en France, à Bordeaux. Euh, C'est une association qui euh, a été fondée par euh, des évaluateurs externes de l'agence française. Il faut savoir que tous les, toutes les candidatures euh, toutes les demandes de financement dans le cadre de Erasmus+, euh, nécessitent une évaluation qui est réalisée par des experts externes de, des agences et de la Commission européenne. Nous avons donc eu la volonté de vouloir partager les informations euh, entre évaluateurs et les meilleures pratiques euh, d'évaluation. Et notre association rassemble aujourd'hui plus de 100 membres qui sont français pour la plupart, mais également euh, d'autres pays européens et qui viennent de tous les secteurs de l'éducation, de la formation professionnelle, qu'ils soient publics ou privés. Notre association donc fédère ses experts et ses évaluateurs, les informe euh, par une veille précise, les représente pour l'instant auprès des agences nationales françaises et contribue au développement de leurs compétences d'évaluation de projets européens. Elle les forme également dans le domaine des projets de la Commission européenne pour chaque fois qu'un nouveau projet apparaît. Et euh, nous sommes en train de favoriser l'émergence d'autres associations dans l'espace européen, car nous sommes la seule association en Europe d'évaluateurs euh, de projets de formation euh, européens. Notre association donc euh, propose des services à ses adhérents qui sont de dialoguer déjà, de les représenter avec les agences nationales françaises, de partager les expériences, d'apporter des informations sur tous les projets, sur l'évaluation, sur l'expertise technique. Nous créons aussi, nous avons des partenariats avec d'autres associations et enfin nous formons nos membres pour avoir de nouvelles compétences en évaluation et en expertise. C'est à toi Fabrice. Uh, so our uh, organization was created in Bordeaux in 2012 by external evaluators. Its primary objective is to share information and good practices among external evaluators of the National Agency Erasmus Plus France. It gathers more than 100 members, both in France and in other European countries. They all have a background in the field of education and professional development. They either work for the private or for the public sectors. The organization federates and informs the member experts and evaluators through precise data monitoring and represents them at the National French Erasmus Plus Agency. It takes an active part in developing their skills as evaluators of European projects and provides training to them in the project landscape of the European Commission. It also promotes the emergence of other organizations in the European space, as Jean-Luc said earlier, uh, Evalu is the only um, on the European Association that works with the national agency. It also establishes a constructive dialogue with national French agencies by sharing experiences, informs on European projects, assessment and technical expertise. It partners with other organizations and professional opportunities are offered to develop evaluation skills and expertise. Jean-Luc and I wanted to give you a very comprehensive an extensive understanding of the Erasmus Plus program for education, training, youth, and sport to 2014-2020. Uh, there was indeed a need for a new approach. Why was there a need for a new approach? Because there is deep economic crisis and high youth unemployment. Vacancies exist, but skill gaps and low employability of graduates are there. There exists growing requirement for high school jobs and a global competition for talent due to the internationalization of education. There is an extraordinary broadening of learning offer and potential ICT, a complementarity between formal, informal, and non-formal learning, and a need for closer links with the world of work. Therefore, a new approach was necessary. So we need closer links between programs and policy objectives, more synergies and interaction between formal, informal and non-formal learning, 
more cross-sectoral partnerships with World of Work, a streamlined, simpler architecture, and finally, a stronger focus on EU added values. This new approach is designed in congruence with policy objectives, Europe 2020 targets, raising higher education attainment from 32% to 40%, reducing the share of early school leavers from 14% to less than 10%, ET2020 strategy, the renewed framework for European cooperation, the youth field 2010-2018, the European dimension in sports and the EU work plan on sports, the strong international dimension, especially as regards to higher education. This new approach gives more opportunities for VET and higher education students to increase their employability through traineeship foster quality improvement in all sectors through staff mobility and strategic partnership, strong emphasis on cross-sector strategic partnership and ICT projects, new innovative actions to enhance employability and entrepreneurship through knowledge alliances and sector skills alliances, and new way to trigger policy reform through prospective initiatives. So what's new? There is a single integrated program covering all education, training in youth sectors in a holistic manner and adding sport, bringing a single coherent framework and seeking to achieve greater systemic impact. Due to the fact that there is a single integrated program, there are two consequences. Substantial simplification, indeed fewer calls and large reduction number of actions more user-friendly programs, easier to navigate around, simplified financial management and great use of, of unit costs, and of course a substantial budget increase of 40%, benefiting all sectors, additional funding from external action instruments to support international dimension of higher education. Uh, there are three main types of key action in the Erasmus Plus program. Key action one concerns learning mobility of individuals through staff mobility, in particular for teachers, lecturers, school leaders, and youth workers. Mobility for higher education students, vocational education and training students. Student loan guarantee, joint master's degree, mobility for higher education and for EU and non-EU beneficiaries, volunteering and youth exchanges. Key action two is about cooperation for innovation and exchange of good practices through strategic partnership between education, training, or youth organization or other relevant actors, large-scale partnerships between education and training establishment and businesses, knowledge alliance and sector skills alliance, IT platforms including e twinning and cooperation with third countries and focus on neighboring countries. And finally, key action three, to support policy reform by implementing open method of coordination, prospective initiatives, EU recognition tools, dissemination and exploitation, policy dialogue with stakeholders, third countries, and international organizations. The budget is allocated as follows. 77.5% 70, are allocated to education and training, 10% on youth, 3.5 on student loan facility. National agencies get 3%, 3.4%. Administrative costs represent 1.9% as well as Jean Monnet. And sports represent 1.8% of the budget. Before going uh, into further detail about the key action, we would like to share with you some figures. Two million higher education students will study and train abroad. 600 and 600, 650,000 vocational students will spend part of their education and training abroad. 200,000 master degree students will benefit from a loan guarantee scheme. And more than 25,000 scholarships for joint master's degree. 500,000 young people will volunteer abroad and take part in youth exchanges. 800,000 lecturers, teachers, trainers, and educational staff and youth workers will teach or train abroad. 25,000 uh, strategic partnerships involving 125,000 institutions and organizations to implement joint initiatives to promote exchanges of experience and know-how and links with the world of work. 
nearly $300 alliance and sector close alliances involving 3,500 education institutions and enterprises working together. More than 200,000 teachers collaborating online and involving more than 100,000 schools through each winning. We would like to share with you how these key actions have been designed in, different, uh, in seven different domains of education, school education, higher education, vocational education and training, adult education, youth, Germany programs, and sports. So we will start with school education. The main objective of school education is that these activities will focus on common priorities related to your 2020 strategy, education and training 2020 framework in particular, with reducing early school leaving, improving attainment in basic skills, reinforcing quality in early childhood and education and care. The main activities, three main activities, learning mobility for preschool and school staff, strategic partnership for cooperation between schools, local, regional authorities and other sectors, each winning as an online community offering services to teacher, pupils and school leaders, teacher educators and student teachers. Key action one in school education is staff mobility to develop school staff competencies such as language and ICT skills, offer professional development opportunities abroad. It can be accomplished through professional development, for instance, participation in structured courses, training events abroad, job shadowing, observation period abroad in a partner school, other relevant organizations in the field of school education, and teaching assignments. Key action two in school education is strategic partnership, aiming at um, so that school, local, regional, school authorities, teacher training institutions and departments, and other types of organizations in different countries develop, transfer, and implement innovative practices with four main activities, cross-sectoral cooperation between schools and other organizations, leading to curriculum development, enforcement of basic skills, combating violence in schools, for instance, local consortia between local regional authorities and schools to improve the educational offer for young people, for instance. Exchange of groups of pupils on study training period with a project aiming at reinforcing linguistic skills and intercultural awareness, each winning for online exchanges for teachers online, workshops, professional development of teachers, student teachers, teacher educators, and boarding pupils. Key action three for school education is policy reform. Two aims, two goals. Peer learning through high level policy makers, practitioners, participating organizations, researchers and stakeholder groups, and development of national policies in the European dialogue. Through transnational experimentation with innovative policy measures and transfer to other systems. Another area of the um, an another area of the uh, Erasmus Plus program is higher education, with five goals: increase the skills and employability of students and contribute to the competitiveness of European economy, improve quality in teaching and learning, implement the higher education modernization strategies in program countries and raise the capacity of partner countries. Streamline the international dimension in Erasmus Plus and support the Bologna process and policy dialogue with strategic partner countries. Key action one is divided into two types, student mobility and staff mobility. I will start with the first one, so student mobility, to provide more and better opportunities to increase skills and competencies of higher education students to attract the best talents from abroad. Its main activities are credit mobility, including traineeship, um, traineeship abroad, mobility for students for studies open to partner countries in both directions, this is new, as well as the student loan guarantee, which is new as well, to boost master's degree mobility within Europe, and degree mobility with excellent joint master courses offered by universities from Europe, and in some cases, partner countries attracting the very best students worldwide. As far as staff mobility is concerned, the goal is to provide more and better opportunities for an increased quality in teaching and learning, 
with three main activities, teaching assignment, which, is, um, which has been introduced to develop innovative uh, to develop innovative and teaching methods, mobility open to part of countries in both directions, and uh, professional development, which is which has been new as well, to improve skills and competencies of both academic and non-academic staff open to part of countries in both directions. Uh, invited staff from enterprise to increase the relevance of curriculum. Key action two in higher education is threefolded higher education strategic partnership, knowledge alliance, and capacity building in higher education. I will start with the first one, higher education strategic partnership, which is meant to enhance stronger cooperation between higher education institutions and with key stakeholders, such as enterprises, research organizations, social partners, local and regional authorities, other education and training and youth sectors to foster quality and innovation in education with four main activities to develop, test, implement new joint curricula, joint study programs, common modules, intensive programs, develop program-based cooperation with enterprises to study real-life cases, exploit the potential of open resources, collaborative and personalized learning. <coughs> and integrate various study modes, such as distance, part-time, or modular. Key action two, cooperation for innovation with the uh, knowledge alliances to enhance structured and long-term cooperation between higher education institutions and enterprises to develop innovative ways of producing and sharing knowledge in result-driven projects, particularly in emerging fields. Three main activities, deliver new multidisciplinary curricula responding to business needs, stimulate entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial mindset of students, academic and company staff, facilitate the exchange flow and creation of knowledge between higher education institutions and enterprises. Capacity building in higher education, two types of projects with neighboring and enlargement countries, Russia, Asia, Latin America, Africa, Caribbean, and Pacific, with um, through joint projects and structural projects, joint projects with new curriculum and degrees, learning and teaching methodologies, staff development, quality assurance, governance, Bologna tools, and structural projects through reforms at national level with support of authorities and partner countries, policy modernization, Bologna policies, governance and management of higher education systems, and additional mobility component for European neighboring policy and enlargement countries without national agencies, student and staff to and from EU, same rules for credit mobility, which is maximum of 12 months. Key action three for higher education is to support policy reform to support EU development in higher education policy for a higher systemic impact. And uh, the main activities, seven main activities to support the uh, open method of coordination, higher education modernization agenda, Bologna process, develop and implement the EU transparency tools such as the European credit transfer system, Recognition of qualifications through the National Academic Recognition Information Centers, network of higher education reform experts in neighboring and enlargement countries, international policy dialogue, worldwide alumni organization, international attractiveness and promotion. Another area uh, that we wanted to talk to you about is vocational education and training with uh, the goal to increase the employability and life skills of ET learners and contribute to the competitiveness of the European economy, support the, uh, the, uh, support the enhanced European cooperation with ET with the objective of the Bruges Communica and uh, assure quality. Key action one is VET mobility in order to increase training opportunities abroad of VET learners and to provide them with skills needed for the transition from education and training to work through trainingship abroad in a company, other workplace, public organization, non-governmental non organization, or in a VET school with periods of work-based learning in a company. 
The second aim is to update acquired knowledge of work practices and or to refresh pedagogical skills of IT professionals through teachers and company train trainers, also non-teaching staff, for example, institution leaders, training managers, guidance counselors, with three main activities, work placement in an enterprise, training, teaching institution, teaching assignment to partner institution, job shadowing a teaching or training institution. Key action two, cooperation for innovation, two types of co cooperation, the EG strategic partnership and sector skills alliances. The first one, the EG strategic partnership, aims at um, developing transnational cooperation between VET providers and local regional business communities through four main activities, exchanging good practices and innovation VET provisions, guidance and counseling, developing and delivering new VET teaching and training material and methods, and foster structured and long-term cooperation among VET institutions with stakeholders, private enterprise, social partners, local, regional authorities, and NGOs. And finally, cross-sector cooperation to build bridges and share knowledge between different formal and informal education, training, and use sectors. Cooperation uh, for innovation still and here in the uh, sector skill alliances in order to enhance the responsiveness of the ET systems to sector specific labor market needs contributing to increased economic competitiveness of the concerned sector with three main activities, design, deliver curricula responding to the needs of labor market and of the learners in economic sectors, projects promoting work-based learning and facilitating recognition of qualification at EU level. Key action three, support for policy reform in vocational education and training, aiming at supporting EU policy development and to respond to several of the specific policy objectives of the VET system with uh, three main activities, peer learning and mutual learning activities through thematic working groups, studies to increase quality and supply of apprenticeship through European alliances for apprenticeship, support for EU tools such as the European Credit System for Vocational Education and Training, and European Quality Assurance in Vocational Education and Training. Fourth domain, of, um, fourth domain of the Erasmus program is adult education. The goal is to modernize and improve adult education through cooperation with other sectors, validate non-formal and informal education, guide systems, and assure quality. Key action one in adult education is staff mobility to develop and broaden knowledge, skills, and competencies with three main activities, participation in structured courses and training events abroad, job shadowing and observation period in an adult education or other sectors relevant to the organization abroad, and teaching assignments. Key action two is uh, in adult education, it aims at uh, providing quality teaching and learning opportunities for adults and to strengthen the learning offer of the adult education providers with a focus on basic skills, active citizenship, and key competencies for employability with five main activities, cross-sector cooperation for exchange experiences and the best practices between organizations, developing, testing, and validating new curricular teaching methods of innovative pedagogical approaches, projects addressing the acquisition of basic skills, such as literacy, numeracy, and ICT, and the provision of a second chance opportunity and learning in later life, improving the accessibility of learning opportunities for adults, develop strategic cooperation between adult education providers and local or and regional authorities. Key action three, support for policy reform, aiming at contributing the development of national policies and European dialogue on adult education systems and practices with three main activities. Support national policy reform by building national networks and coalitions of interested groups. Support to awareness campaigns promoting the benefits of learning both for individuals, the economy, and society. Peer learning activities 
between high-level policymakers, practitioners, relevant organizations, researchers, and stakeholder groups. And the fifth field of the Erasmus Plus program is youth. The youth partition of the program has four objectives to improve the level of key competencies and skills of young people, including those with fewer opportunities and youth workers, as well as to promote participation in democratic life in Europe and the labor market, active citizenship, intercultural dialogue, social inclusion, and solidarity. It also, aims, it also aims at fostering quality improvements in youth work, in particular through enhanced cooperation between organizations in the youth field and or other stakeholders, complement policy reform at local, regional, and national level, and to support the development of knowledge and of knowledge and evidence-based use policy as well as the recognition of non-formal and informal learning. It also aims at enhancing the international dimension of youth activities. The main activities support youth mobility projects such as youth exchanges, European voluntary service, structured courses, training courses, contact making events, study visits abroad, job shadowing and observations period in a, in a youth organization abroad, a youth organization, education and training institutions and companies, mobility projects submitted by national and regional public bodies and by organizations active in corporate social responsibility, and finally the large-scale European voluntary service events. Key action two is the cooperation and innovation for good practices with uh, first, the strategic partnership and also the capacity building that I'm going to talk to, talk to you about in a little minute later, with, um, with, main with the main activities to strengthen cross-sectoral cooperation between organizations for exchanges of practices, develop, test, and implement innovative practices in the field of youth, education, and training, validate competencies acquired through non-formal and informal learning at national level by referencing them to the EU frameworks and using EU documentation instruments such as Europath and YouthPath. And for two goals for strategic partnership, cooperate between regional authorities to promote the development of education, training, and youth system and their integration in actions of local and regional development, and encourage transnational initiatives fostering entrepreneurial mindsets and skills to encourage active citizenship and new social enterprise creation. Capacity building, um, capacity building, am I? Capacity building aims at fostering cooperation exchanges in the field of youth between program countries and public countries from different regions of the world. The ACP that we talked about earlier on, Latin America, Asia, industrialized countries with six main activities strategic cooperation between youth organizations on the one hand and public authorities on the other hand in partner countries, cooperate between youth organization, organizations in, education, in the education training fields as well as with representatives of business and labor market as well as with NGOs. It also um, enables to uh, raise the capacities of youth councils, youth platform, and national, regional, and local authorities dealing with youth in partner countries, enhance the management, governance, innovation capacity, and internationalization of youth organizations, launch, test, and implement youth work practices, implement youth mobility activities from and to partner countries, such as youth exchanges, European Voluntary Service, Youth Workers Mobility. Key action three, to support policy reform for youth. So the goal is to develop youth policy, policy cooperation at European level, promote the EU youth strategy, and encourage structured dialogue. With five main activities, supporting the open method of coordination with peer learning and evidence gathering, support structured dialogues in the field of youth, meeting between young people and decision makers, support the structured dialogue national working groups, support the European Youth Forum and civil society partnership with European youth NGOs, implement 
union transparency and recognition tools such as the Youth Pass and the European Youth Week. The Jean Monnet, um, the Jean Monnet domain of the Erasmus Plus program aims at promoting excellence in European integration studies in higher education with five main activities, teaching and research with chairs, modules, and centers of excellence, policy debate with academic world and exchanges, networks and projects supporting to institutions or associations activities, the creation of Jean Monnet light label. The Jean Monnet also provides operating grants to specific institutions. Jean Monnet activities um, include modules, chairs, and centers of excellence with 40 hours teaching, teaching program in the field of European Union studies, 90 hours teaching posts with a specialization in European Union studies, and centers of excellence with focal points of competencies and knowledge on European Union subjects. The main activities are to teach in European integration studies embodied in an official curriculum to conduct, monitor, and supervise research on EU subjects, organize and coordinate human and documentary resources related to European Union studies. And finally, the last dimension of the Erasmus Plus program is sport. Uh, the Erasmus Plus contribution to sport aims at tackling cross-border threats to the integrity of sport, doping, match fixing, violence, intolerance, and discrimination, to promote and support good governance in sport and dual career athletes, promote voluntary activities, social inclusion, and equal opportunities, together with the awareness of the importance of health enhancing physical activity and equal access to sport for all. Main activities supporting grassroots sports include support for collaborative partnership, non-profit European sport events involving several countries relating to social inclusion, health enhancing physical activities, strengthening the evidence base for policy making and dialogue with other relevant stakeholders. I uh, would like to thank you so much for following this uh, highly condensed presentation of the Erasmus Plus program. The floor is yours for questions or uh, reactions. So if you have a question, you can put it in the chat or you can uh, raise your virtual hand. There's a hand icon in the participant window at the top that lets you raise your hand. So Magda, I'm going to give you microphone, or you can put your question in the chat. To turn your microphone on, you click on the um, talk button in the participant window. <laughs> Well, and Magda clicked on the audio setup wizard, so we won't hear from her for about two minutes while she goes through that process. Lucy, did you want to ask a question? It looks like you had a question. Um, but Magda chat. was asking me earlier if uh, if they were if you guys were going to talk about extending the Erasmus program to other countries besides the ones in the U EU, and then. Um, Anissa in the in the chat also wanted to know how she could get her school involved as well. She said that she asked an, an Erasmus office and they said no to her. Um, Anissa, where are you? What country are you in? Can, can you give Anissa the uh, microphone if she wants to talk? She's in Albania. Well, to answer to answer Anissa, it's possible for her to do this, and I've seen that John Lucas already responded in the chat box. But uh, she can participate with a leader from Europe, so she would have to find a school there or an institution, educational institution in Europe.
Were there other questions by any participants or? Yes, so there's one from Miriam there. She says, hi, very good and compact presentation, not an easy job. Can you please let me know where we can contact the coordinators of Erasmus Plus program in French, Polynesia? Uh, yeah, I think if she can, if she can give us, uh, if she can give us the, um, uh, her email address, we will be more than happy then, uh, to, uh, to get that information. Richard wants to know if you work in Somaliland or Somalia, or Somali. I need to ask that to Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc, on travaille oui. en, uh, en Somalie, oui? Uh, avec uh, tous les pays du monde, mais après, uh, ça dépend de chaque uh, programme. Mais uh, la Somalie n'est pas exclue, uh, en particulier au niveau de l'enseignement supérieur. Mm -hmm. So basically, Jean-Luc was saying to me that um, that all the countries can be included in the Erasmus program, especially in higher education. They would need to have a partner in Europe. Je, je peux ajouter aussi, euh, Fabrice, que euh, dans les perspectives euh, prévues pour euh, le programme 2021-2027, euh, la volonté de beaucoup d'États de, membres Euh, et de d'élargir euh, la coopération euh, depuis les États euh, donc euh, autres que les États européens et euh, vers les États euh, autres que européens. Donc il y a une volonté de de, de, de partager euh, et de travailler en fait dans l'éducation euh, que ce soit pour euh, importer ou exporter euh, le, les, les savoir-faire et, et les, les connaissances et les pratiques euh, donc euh, pédagogiques qui nous montrent. So Jean-Luc was telling me that uh, in the next plan, like to, um, uh, to 2021, 2027, there will be an increase desire to open um, to open the Erasmus Plus program and uh, to, to, to other members because it's, it's really a desire from all the member states that really want to import and export uh, good practices, exchange of knowledge, exchange of good practices. So this is really, this is really like a, a very uh, clear path that uh, the Erasmus Plus program is taking. Okay, so if you have a question, you can put it in the chat, or you can raise your virtual hand, and we will give you a microphone. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Hi, this is Magda Navali Pearson. How are you? Thank you for, so much for your explanation. I have a very, I'm, I'm not sure if I understood. How does it work? Erasmus Plus, is it possible to partner U.S. institutions with uh, European institutions in the Erasmus Plus? And if so, how does it work? How long is the process? Uh, what should we do to find out more information about it? From uh, what country? Uh, I'm f uh, United States, Florida. Yes. Okay, uh, it's possible, but you must find um, uh, a lead partner from Europe. Uh huh. Uh, so uh, you can't uh, you can't apply uh, in Erasmus program uh, for your own uh, institution uh -huh. uh, from United States. So you, you must have a partnership uh, existing. Our, uh, our new uh, partnership with uh, uh -huh. uh, with uh, uh, European uh, organizations, schools, and so uh, uh, all these possible. But uh, <laughs> you must have the project uh, ID, and uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, it's possible to 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 present an application. I see. And how can I create a partnership from scratch? 
is it still possible? Because I don't think we have an existing partnership already. So how can I create a new one? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible uh, through uh, the e-twinning uh, platform. So uh, this uh, platform uh, is really? open for uh, all uh, all schools of the world. So uh, it's possible to find a partner. And if you if you work uh, through adult education, you have uh, another uh, platform, uh, which is EPAL, and. Uh, through these platforms, you can uh, you can uh, find uh, interesting partners. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I hear a question about uh, UK in, in Europe. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a problem now, but uh, we can't uh, answer to this question. Uh, after uh, the next uh, year, uh, we have no uh, no no visibility. It's a, it's a problem of the Brexit. Uh, I see a question in the chat about uh, evaluation methods. Uh, the external evaluation uh, is built with uh, a grid, uh, a grid uh, uh, made uh, by uh, European Commission. So uh, we we follow we must follow the, the grids uh, for each uh, external evaluation. Uh, Either uh, applications or uh, final reports. So the, the it's very formal. Okay, any other questions? Anissa, the same question. Through, uh, if you work in, uh, in school, uh, and Go to the e-training uh, site website. So it's uh, the first way, and so you can uh, you can get uh, uh, names in uh, uh, international uh, networks of uh, of uh, European or not European uh, of, of schools or uh, organizations. So there's a lot of of uh, possibilities. To complement maybe what um, um, was only said, Anissa, you um, so you have uh, all the links like in the chat box, and uh, you ca you can click on them. There's also the possibility for you to go through the Germany Centers of Excellence. I don't know where you live, but if you live in the U.S., there's a list uh, that uh, I can make available for you. Are we ready to wrap it up? We are ready, but there are no more questions. And maybe I can get Anissa's email so I can I can get in touch with her and follow up. Yeah, Miriam left her email address in the chat. And Anissa, if you would leave yours in as well. Perfect. And Fabrice, if you go up to File, Save Chat, you can save the chat, then you can look back through it and also gather the email addresses.
Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. Okay, I think we'll wrap things up. We've got some. We've got four sessions coming up at the top of the next hour. Please go to the calendar and see if there's one that's of interest to you. Thanks to Fabrice and Jean-Luc. Thank you both so much. Thank you again for having us. Absolutely.